Hello friends, myself Professor Vinod Pillai. Welcome to C++ programming session. In today's session, we'll be seeing how to create simple functions in C++. If you're aware with C, then you can easily create simple functions in C++. It's almost similar to what you used to do in C. This is for the, all those users who have directly come to C++ who are having not much knowledge of C. In C++, it has created some special functions like friend functions, inline functions, function overloading concepts, but still it has provided the simple function concepts. That is, what you used to do in C is still available in C++. So in today's session, I'll be showing you how to create simple functions in C++. First and foremost, we will be learning about explaining about functions, what is the need of functions, how we can create simple functions, and what are the different types of simple functions available in C++. First and foremost, you should be knowing what is functions and why we need functions. Function is a block of code, or you can say the codes which we want to be executed repeatedly at different locations. For example, if we want, if I want to calculate sum of two numbers again and again in my program at different locations, then instead of writing the C out and C in for the values and getting the values and then additions code, I'll be doing is what I'll be writing that particular code at single point and allocating a single name to that point. And whatever locations I'll be needing that code, I'll be just calling it. So what are the advantages I'm getting in function is that you have to write the code only once and other all locations, you have to just simply call it instead of repeatedly typing the code. So advantage number one is like your code becomes less because only one time you have to write. The advantage number two you are getting is that if any error comes at any particular position or you're not getting the right answer, then you can easily identify the where is the error because or if suppose we want to repeat the code at 50 locations then we want to have to write find the error in that 50 locations we have to find the location where the exactly the code is been written and that is written only once so error finding is quite easy third advantage we get in with functions is that if you want to make any modifications in the existing code it is quite easy because if you make one change it will be affected automatically in the 50 positions where you are being calling so I hope so you have understood now what is the function and what is the advantages. In simple words, we write the code only once in a single block and we assign a name to it. And whatever precisions we want to call it, we simply call that particular function. Now first and foremost, let's understand what is how the function looks like and what are the major parts. A function has three major parts. One is function declaration, second is function definition and third is function calling. Function declaration is a section where we declare as like a normal variable. We'll say to the program or to the compiler that I'm going to use such a function in my program or I'm going to create such a function in my program. So function declaration will not have a logic. It will have an outer body. Function definition will have an actual logic. That's at the bottom I've shown where you'll specify what the function should do. Function calling is the position where we exactly want that particular code to be executed. That is the 50 locations we want to repeat the code. Okay, so in that all locations will simply call it by name. The function declaration or you can say a function declaration has three major parts. First is return type, second is function's name and third is argument. Okay, the return type specifies what value you will be returning. The name is the name you want to assign to the function. And the argument is how many values you want to pass. So that is the function's three major parts. Now a function can be divided into three major parts. Not only the parts, you can say types. First is it may be have possible, you can create a function with no argument and no return type. Second, you may create a function with argument but no return type. The third, you will create a function which will have argument and which will even have a return type. These are the three major parts of a function or you can say types of function. Based on requirements, you can create as many functions as per your requirements. So if your requirement is something like this, that you have to create a function where you will not pass any values, all the operations, all the logics should be done by the function and should not return any value, then you must be opting for no argument, no return type function. If in case you are having a requirement where you will be saying that argument is to be passed, that is the function has to process as per my requirements, then it is function with argument but you don't want any return a value, then it will be a function with argument but no return type. If you say, I'll pass the values, you have to process on that values only and after processing whatever the result comes, you have to return it to back to me, then it comes to a 
function with argument and no return type so these are the three major types of functions yes you can convert as many as requirements it may possible like no argument but return type is possible but that is not to be considered because it will be understood if you understand the first three of them so majorly it happens I don't pass any values I don't expect a return value all the things is the responsibility of the function then it is no argument no return type I'll pass the value you have to process only those values on those values only and you don't have to return a value then it comes function with argument but no return type if I say a function arguments has been passed by me and the return value is also be passed to me then it's a function with argument and with return type so let's understand with this thing example so first and foremost the function declaration function declaration will be held before the main method so I have to declare what type of function it is suppose if I want to simply print a message then I don't expect any values to be passed to me either by me or not even returned by the function so it becomes void because I don't expect any values if you don't expect any values you have to write void then comes the function name that you can assign any of them general rules to be followed you can't include a ca an integer values in the front and all those things space is not allowed and that's fine so function name is being given by the user then comes the argument if you're not passing any values then the bracket will be empty in the second scenario where I say the void is the function that is I don't expect any values this is the function name but I, ex I do expect you to process on according to my values then the question comes how many values you're passing and what is the data type of values so this is the example where I'm saying a function with argument but no return type let's understand the first one function with no argument no return type so this is the declaration where I said void I don't expect any values this is my function name I don't pass any values so the bracket is empty let's see the definition part so the definition is exactly the same instead of semicolon we put this early braces whatever code you want to put it here you can just simply put it here so function definition is simple you don't pass it and you don't expect any return function calling is simply you have to call the functions name you're not passing you have said you will not pass any value so the bracket will be empty now comes the question second that is if suppose I say I'll pass two values you have to do addition on that function then have you have to create a function you don't have, expect any return value from that function so it is void then comes the function name and then comes the two argument you are going to pass it may be possible you can pass one argument you can pass three arguments and a number of arguments and the type of the arguments you're passing is also up to the user you can pass integer and float and even you can pass character character array string or you can pass user defined data type that is class so this is the declaration so it is a semicolon ends it you just copy this line and paste it to the at the bottom of the integer main method the main method and you just put instead of semicolon remove the semicolon assign the two curly braces to it and write whatever logic you want to write so values is been passed by the user you have to process on that so I've created an integer variable rel I did all the operations it and simply I print the value of rel so here what happens is the function is doing the task but it has to do the task according to my values being passed by him so in the function calling I have to pass according to the rules so I'm calling the function instead of simply bracket empty brackets I'm passing the two values that two integer because we that is what I was been assigned to do now comes the question if suppose I someone says that I will pass two values you have to do process on those values only and after doing the task you have to return the value also so that comes if you if someone says you have to return then the return only you can only officially you can only return one single values in with the help of pointers yes you can return more than one values that's another point but in generally in functions you only return single values so return type is depends how what type you want to be returned so I'm saying I'll return an integer value so it says integer instead of void then comes the function name like the normal one we used to do then I'll say I'll pass two values you have to do the processing after doing the processing you have to return the value so I'm passing the two values whichever data type it is being told to me yes then comes the semicolon in the function definition simply I copy paste it and in, instead of semicolon I put the curly braces did all the logic you will see that the val1 and val2 on which I'm doing the process is all passed by the user whatever answer I'm getting in REL I'll print it but ultimately I have to return as per my suggested by the declaration so return REL I'm saying so whatever value is being processed whatever result comes it will be returned from here now if you see it now when calling in sub function I'm saying sub function the value I'm passing that value is been passed to the bottom it will do all the processing on 2000 and 1000 whatever answer comes it is taken by integer a in this. this is important because sub function is a function which is going to return a value so someone has to be there to take the values so I've kept a in s because it is returning an integer value and a is also an integer value and finally I'm printing the value 
So these are the three major types of functions and we have seen how why function is needed, what is the advantage of it, how to create simple functions in C++. If you know C, then it is almost same. You'll find no differences. Only thing is in C++, declaration is quite compulsory. So a function has three major parts, function declaration, function definition, and function calling. Declaration comes at the bottom of the class and func uh, or main method. Definition goes bottom of the ma main method and function calling is done as per your requirements. Three major types of function is there. No argument, no return type. With argument but no return type. Argument and return type. I hope so I have cleared the doubts of simple function. If you have still any queries, you can uh, comment on this video. Or else you can email me or you can see the code, all the relevant codes in my blog. We know the best.wordpress.com. Thank you and have a nice day.